mm-hmm. that those persons are not experiencing the greatest negatives that we're seeking to fight. Mm-hmm. And so I feel that if we can get a degree per household, we would then clearly have, and then they become the, the agents of change within their, their, their direct society. Yeah, I like that. Increase Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. It's a girl and Isabel Rose. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Thanks for returning subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notification bell on. Put it on all so you won't miss an upload from me. On the road to 20k, help me to get there, my people. So in this one, my people, Damian Crawford explains his GCT increase to fund another 25 billion for education system. As well as Mother Cries for four day whole baby whom the healthcare system has failed due to a lack of ventilator stay tuned for the details at hand don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel run go over to my other platform at bell rose shorts media subscribe over there get that channel to 1k for me please and thanks Some people with all that is going on right now in the social media space i'm just getting around to do a video on this topic as it pertains to a mother who had to watch her baby four days old newborn basically being failed by the healthcare system due to a lack of a ventilator and so in an article in the gleaner uh, Miss Farkison Blackstock, who's a nursing student, was admitted to the hospital, a type B facility, last week, Wednesday, after her gynecologist determined that her blood pressure was too high. She was around 30 weeks and 6 days pregnant, entering her 8th month. On Friday, she was delivered via C-section, but the doctors indicated that the baby's lungs had not fully developed and needed assistance of a ventilator. The newborn was placed in an incubator and an ambibag was used to provide respiratory support. The doctors and nurses would take turns pumping the bag. Whenever his stats improved, doctors would allow him to attempt to breathe on his own, placing a tube down his throat and to his lungs to help maintain saturation. The mother said the baby remained stable for some time before he began to struggle again and doctors returned to the ambibag but struggled to keep his vitals up. A doctor came from over the pediatric ward and said to her, your son is not doing well, do you want to come and look for him? She went despite her blood pressure being elevated only to see her baby exhibiting signs of respiratory distress. The newborn died on Tuesday, four days after being born. The medical team, which took turns manually ventilating the baby, was not able to secure transfer to another hospital. The Mandeville Regional Hospital, approximately 45 minutes away from Maypen, was reportedly short-staffed, though a ventilator was available. Spanish Town Hospital in St. Catherine, the Bustamante Hospital for Children, and the University Hospital of the West Indies in St. Andrew were all at capacity. Private facilities were also unable to accommodate the newborn. They have good staff. I won't say that they weren't doing their best because they have done their best. And as I told the doctors there, I told them that because they were there right throughout. Some of them did not get to sleep even for a second. And I know how rough it can be to work on a night shift with so much patience and still attending to one baby just to see that baby keep breathing. Mm-hmm. I think this hospital has a lot of ways that it can match it kill it and get better in life but without a ventilator a lot more mothers are going to go through what I have been through I watched my baby took his last breath at 10 17 yesterday with all the doctors and seniors around him seeing how best they could help him just mm-hmm. 
I don't want somebody else to be going through such a pain because it's a really pain. Just wow. That's all I can say in this one, my people. And as a midwife who has worked in the system for almost seven years at a prominent hospital in Kingston, I can attest to the whole shortage of staff, especially on the night duties. It's not easy, especially on the night duties. We have sometimes it's two nurses to 30, sometimes 40 odd patients, depending on the ward that you're on working. And while she's grieving, and we know the grieving process, you know, she didn't blame the staff because many of us who are out there in the fields, we love our profession and we do it with the best neck that we have. Enough time is because of the lack of resources why many other persons, you know, who have lost their lives prematurely didn't get to save, so to speak. It's even circulating in the social media space where we're seeing a woman, you know, basically grieving and crying for some lack of resources and the negligence that failed her mother who passed away at the Falmouth Hospital, I believe. And right now, a big investigation has opened, you know, surrounding that. And so, what of the ventilators that the government had gotten through the whole pandemic? They don't have the technician personnel to clean down the ventilators and reuse them. My God. It's so sad. Can you imagine carrying your child inside, feeling the kicking and the movements, only to deliver that child and have to watch them take their last, last breath due to, you know, resources, lack of resources. Right? It's said that Christopher Tufton broke his arm in an accident. Who is the replacement for him? Is he working still with those broken limbs? Who is in charge currently of the whole health system that we couldn't get this young little neonate, this newborn, a ventilator in time? My God. And I realize it's always the staff. I'm not sure what level of nursing student she is, but it's always a staff child that has to bear the blunt. Me always witness that. It's always a staff. You wait there on the back of the field and make sure when you do your work and you're caring for your patients, you do it with the best neck. And when it comes down to the nitty gritty of it, when someone for you falls ill or whatever the case may be, it's always your child or some family member of yours that ending up getting the shit end of the stick. But, you know, I just want to encourage that mother to just keep on keeping. It's not an easy road. It's not easy losing a child, let alone a child that has been growing inside of you. You didn't even get a chance to even, you know, probably didn't even get a chance to hold this baby. And so, you know, my condolences to you. And may this sweet little baby rest in peace. So in this segment, my people, we see the opposition spokesman on education, Damian Crawford, proposed a 1% point increase to the GCT to fund improvements in the education sector. And this will cost approximately $25 billion. And so he's saying that the 1% increase to the GCT would round up to the $25 billion that's needed to boost the education system. And so, upon seeing that, I never agreed with it any at all. The people are crying on the ground. Inflation up, and people can barely make it with a 15000 minimum wage per week. And so, not even half percent should be added to this GCT, much less one percent. If anything, the government will take half 1% off of the GCT. You understand what I'm saying? And so, we never agree with that any at all. Right? They should 
come up with ways in how to fund this 25 billion more that's needed to boost the education system right we've seen the minister come and blunder a big shortfall in this budget debate here and from him blunder the shortfall i'll know we can see him for find out where and where they're going to use to rectify this shortfall here you understand because much of these programs that they have put forward will not get done because of this shortfall in the budget and so we see in the Jamaica Labour Party Deputy General Secretary Richard Curry says the suggestion should be dismissed. Right? He points out that Jamaica already allocates approximately 20% of its budget and 5% of its GDP to education. He says this puts the country in the upper tier of the world in terms of the allocation of national resources to the education system. He stressed that instead of proposing tax increases, the PNP would be better served working with the government on pursuing reformation of the education sector because it definitely needs reforming. And so we're seeing the People's National Party basically coming out, distancing themselves from the statement, saying that they were just in dialogue amongst each other speaking on how they think they could have come up with funding the education system of this 25 billion needed so they didn't really pinpoint out to say all right let us run with the one percent increase of the gct however you know crawford basically coming out to right is wrong he basically come out saying that he jumped the gun on this one and Moanton of taking him on this interview, saying that he has blundered. Um, that would be true, but but in this particular case, I would be the person in the wrong, because in this particular case, I should have left it at my portfolio, which is we need twenty five billion more. Mm -hmm. It is my habit of seeking solutions that has caused for me to say where we could find this twenty five billion. Yes, but the rightful thing is for me to go to my group and say I need twenty five billion more. Where can we find it? Yes. And others would then have a conversation. So in this particular case, I would be the person who would have overstepped um, to say um, and encroached upon the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. um, or the spokesperson on finance who would say, all right, we have a budget from our spokespersons of $1.5 trillion, and this is how we would fund it. Mm -hmm. So it's a lesson learned um, because, as I said, my, I, I do have the habit of saying not just the need, but the direction, and um, I would have missed, I would have spoken out a turn on this particular um, issue because the funding component wouldn't be mine to bear. Mm -hmm. However, yes. I still maintain that we need the twenty-five to thirty billion dollars more. Yeah, and, and that is undeniable. That's mm -hmm. undeniable. And uh, so it has to be found somehow. It has to be found. I totally agree with you on I that. I just want to say one last thing before sure. you go. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you're in here, so I don't know what... what no, no, we have, we, have, we have a couple of minutes. Go ahead. Oh, okay. The, 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 the child who leaves school at 18, yes. incompetent, becomes a cost to the society until they're 65. Yep. Understand that? Yes. So we don't want to put a meal per child in school. We might have to put a meal per adult in prison. So and you'd have to pass sixty-five to senator in some and cases. And some are living longer. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. when you look at what our our commitment is as a party and my drive of one degree per household, it is because we have recognized that the households with degrees don't experience equally the negatives of society. Mm -hmm. The household with degrees don't produce the criminal element in equal measure. Yes. To the households without degrees. The households with degrees don't experience the hope, sorry, the hunger. Mm -hmm. um, don't experience the illiteracy. Yes. Don't experience the lack of health care access mm -hmm. to the same level of the households without degrees. Mm -hmm. So having seen that that single opportunity of a degreed household, and that includes level four at heart, etc., so a full professional in, in skills area is equivalent to a degree, mm -hmm. that those persons, are not experienced the greatest negatives that we're seeking to fight. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that if we can get a degree per household, we would then clearly have CXEs, 
per household because the person must matriculate to the university. Yes. Clearly have literacy per household because mm-hmm. the person must matriculate to the university. Mm-hmm. And then they become the, the agents of change within their, their, their direct society. I like that Increase idea. the community. So that is the basis of why we're saying we cannot continue paying teachers alone with the budget for education and then blame the teachers for not being able to deliver. Yes, I agree with you totally there. I have to leave it there, Senator. Thank you so much for this morning. Yeah, Thank you for and, the opportunity. And absolutely. And, and that energy, uh, but we, 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 we want you to continue. Yes, so so do, yeah, keep it up. All the best. Thank you. Thank Good you. Man. Take mm-hmm. care. And some people who want to hear from you, know, drop for you two cents in the comment section. Tell me what you think about everything that was said in this video. Make a reason in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Run over to my other platform, Instagram and Facebook, and follow me over there at Anissa Bell Rose. Check out the YouTube store, make a purchase. It goes in support of the channel. Check out the YouTube membership. You get a lot of benefits by becoming a member. Only a small fee per month to become a member of the Anissa Bell Rose movement. Member shout out goes to Angela and Ivan Wallace. Big up on a self assist. Thanks for the continued support on the channel. To all my returning subscribers and new viewers who have become subscribers, thanks for the continued support from each and every one. Like up the video, share out the video, support the ABR movement by playing your part on the road to 20k. Stay tuned for more videos, stay tuned for more updates. Get this video to at least 2,000 likes, my people. Big up on yourself.